Hey, what is up everyone? Hope you guys are having a good day. It's been a while since I've uploaded a video. And today we have a new robot uh, robot mop. It is called the Ebody P8. It's a uh, robotic vacuum cleaner. Uh, so this one is kind of a long story. I'll try to keep it short, but uh, I actually purchased this probably a little over two years ago. And I actually purchased this on Kickstarter. And the whole premise of this was that this robot would be half price of most robotic vacuums on the market, uh, which is still the case today. But it took me quite a long time to get this. Unfortunately, COVID made things a lot worse, especially because of the uh, shutdowns in China. Um, I was looking to get a refund on this and unfortunately that didn't quite work out. So I ended up getting it anyway. And uh, we're just gonna put it to you. So I'm gonna put it in the garage and uh, we'll kind of see how that works out. I was looking to, I was actually gonna resell it, but um, wasn't able to really resell it. And I figured, well, I might as well just put it to use. Uh, I already have a, a robotic mop and vacuum inside the house. Uh, that one is a Dream Tech. I paid a thousand bucks for that one. So uh, this one came in at uh, 650 And I think these ones are now on the market for like 799 I think you can get them on Amazon. So... Uh, I did get a little bit of a discount by using Kickstarter, but it took me uh, quite a long time to actually get it. So we'll put it to you, see how it goes, and uh, we'll make a very small comparison with the Dream Tech. All right, so this is the box, a Bodhi P8 robotic vacuum. And uh, this is the base. Still gotta um, open up some of the other boxes. And uh, as you can see, my floors are dirty. I had a uh, new AC put in, the other one, unfortunately, uh, I had to make a warranty claim, so they gave me a new one. And this is pretty dirty, so I am actually gonna set it up over there next to the uh, uh, the shark, which that one is just a, a vacuum. But uh, as you can see, this place is due for a cleaning. So uh, let's get into it. All right, so we have the uh, base station and robot all set up. Uh, what else do I have? Inside of here, we got two tanks. We've got the clean water. I've already put water in here, plus the uh, the cleaner. And then here's where the wastewater goes. Here is the inside of the robot. As you can see, it's got a very tiny uh, trash receptacle. I would say this is definitely more for hard floors. So, you know, the, uh, the waste bin here is gonna be uh, really small in comparison to others that are designed more for interior um, you know, so it's going to go over carpet. I don't have any type of um, carpeting in here, so that should be fine. And then here's where the uh, the water is going to go on, so on top of the actual uh, robot itself. So let's get this thing charged up. And we'll give it its uh, first test run once it's uh, completely charged up. Uh, one thing that I will say is that getting this thing added to... Uh, the app plus the Wi-Fi was a lot easier than the Dream Tech. And then as you can hear, the voices sound way natural, way more natural than the Dream Tech does, uh, which is really nice. The buttons on here, uh, they have like a very soft rubbery feel. So like overall, the unit feels very high end. Uh, I'll give it credit for that. Um, one, thing that I did, one thing that I don't like is that in the Dream Tech, in the middle here, there's a little slot for the cleaner, and then it automatically dispenses it. However, with this one, you do actually have to add the cleaner uh, manually, uh, which is kind of a bummer. So I'm going to let that thing charge. We'll set it out for its first mapping. I'll move the Tesla, and we'll see how well it does with actually cleaning up the flooring. All right, so I've updated the firmware. Uh, the firmware updates on these ones definitely takes a lot longer than the Dream Tech. But uh, we're going out on its first uh, mapping mission. It's going to be mapping, uh, as you can see, this part of the garage. I did move the Tesla. As you can see, there's tons of dirt where the uh, tires are. And up here where it kind of drips from the air conditioning. And then over there, I'm going to be also mapping that as well. Um, so here we go.
All right, so the mapping process was really quick. Only took four minutes to map, uh, to map this area as well as that. Next thing I'm gonna do is zone off this in case I want to, you know, obviously map the, or mop these two sections differently. And then right now at the very moment, what it's doing is it's adding water to the tank. Um, and then it's gonna be going out for its very first cleaning. Maiden voyage. You see how well it does. I did change some of the settings. And the settings that I changed were that it's going to do uh, a deep cleaning and the pads are going to be very wet. And then I think the other setting that I changed was that when it comes time to actually dry the pads, it's going to use uh, warm air instead of just cool air. I live in Arizona, so it's pretty dry out here anyway, but I definitely don't want to run into the possibility of the, uh, the you know, mopping pads starting to stink uh, because unfortunately I did run into a little bit of an issue with the Dream Tech where it wasn't drying the pads all the way and it was starting to stink a little bit. So uh, I did get that remedied. I uh, did have to clean out the bottom of the uh, little uh, little cleaning dock because I think water was actually uh, pulling in there a little bit. So we'll see how this goes. One one of the benefits of this little mop over some of the mop uh, robotic mops that were on the uh, market at the time that this was being advertised was that it had these spinning pads. But then on top of that, the pads would actually push down. Uh, because previously, the way these robots were designed is it would just push, or excuse me, it would pull a little, uh, you know, a little pad right behind it. Uh, another thing to notice, as you can see here, it's not exactly getting up against the edging, which my Dream Tech also doesn't do that. But some of the newer versions that they're advertising have like this uh, little, you know, mopping pad that will actually clean up against the edge of the uh, of the baseboard, which is nice. Um, so again, you definitely going to want to pay attention to that because it's a possibility that uh, over time dust is going to accumulate. I did also have a scale. As you can see, there's a scale on top of the couch. When it was going through mapping, it was actually pushing that. So I'm not sure if it has object recognition. The Dream Tech is actually quite smart where, you know, if you're environment changes let's say you have kids and they leave a toy around uh, or you have a dog and he leaves his little toy around the dream tech is smart enough to actually go around that object but we'll see how this one does uh, maybe yeah because like in the app it doesn't have any way to update the object recognition like the dream tech is really smart where during the mapping process or when it goes out and cleans, it'll tell you during this cleaning cycle it detected an object in the way and you can actually click on that object and it'll tell you what it thinks that it's categorized as and if it gets it wrong, you can actually go in there and update it. 
And then by updating the model, uh, you're actually making that AI object recognition even smarter. But I don't see any option within the uh, uh, Abode app to make those kind of a change. I will say I do like the Abode AI app. It's very simple. Uh, it's very easy to uh, set up schedules. And it's also easy to make different uh, changes to the settings in comparison to the Dream Tech. Uh, my Dream Tech, I, I did run into an issue where for some reason it lost communication with the app. So when I tried to log back in, it basically said that it wasn't paired and I wasn't able to add that AI robot to the app. So I had to download a different app, but the settings on there were different. So we'll see how the, you know, the customer service side is of the app. Uh, at the moment, it, it's, it's really nice. I'll, I'll give it that. Uh, again, the robot definitely feels uh, very premium. It doesn't feel cheap at all, considering it's half price of what the other you know, mopping robots are on the market, even today. So as you can see, my floors definitely need to be cleaned. And let's, check, let's take a look at the little trails that's leaving behind. So it looks like one of the little mopping pads is not spinning. So it looks like it's detecting the edge of the uh, transition right there and it probably thinks that it's, you know, maybe on the edge of a staircase or something like that and it's not going onto the other surface. So we'll, we'll see how it does, if it's going to clean the entire room at once or if it's going to really depend on me um, having to create zones. We'll, we'll see. clean this floor considering that it has the coin uh, the coin shaped pattern but uh, we'll see it's definitely choosing a very interesting uh, cleaning pattern it's almost like it wants to section it out into quadrants I had no problem going over that threshold right there. And it definitely seems like there's only one side that's currently mopping. It's definitely drying pretty quick. going to think that it's going back to the base to get some more water. I really couldn't hear what it was saying. I'm going to go up and we'll have a listen as it starts to dock itself.
All right, so it also sounds like it cleans the mop head as it comes back and gets um, refilled with water, which as you can see from the floors, that's definitely needed. So I'm gonna let this continue to do its thing. Uh, I'm also gonna check to see if I correctly installed the other mopping pad, uh, and then we'll go from there. All right, so after it refilled its tank, I do notice that the left pad is working again. So I'm wondering if, if during the refill process, uh, maybe the left pad wasn't as saturated or maybe it's just drying out a little bit quicker than the right pad. So we'll continue to monitor that. I haven't, um, I haven't stopped the cleaning process. It's not allowing me to stop the cleaning process so that I can flip it over to check the pad. But you know, after seeing this uh, mark right here, we can definitely see that both pads are currently working. I put the scale down again. We'll see how it does. It wasn't mapped there. But uh, if it has any type of AI recognition, uh, object recognition, it should go around that scale. Otherwise, more than likely, it's just going to continue to push it every time it cleans. And now it looks like it's doing a traditional cleaning where, you know, once it's mapped it out, it, it makes those nice little clean rows. And then I assume because it's a deep cleaning, it might go back and forth kind of like that. Oops, sorry about that. All right, so it's definitely detected the, the scale. And it's very possible that it just had an issue. Be oh, oh, it's pushing it a little bit. It's possible maybe it was just pushing it because it was uh, in mapping mode. It's definitely cleaning along that edge. I mean, that side of the floor is definitely looking a lot better, that's for sure. It's definitely got a weird cleaning pattern I and mean, it looks like the pads are starting to get a little bit dry. <laughs> Very interesting uh, pattern that it's choosing there. It's not as quick as the, the shark vacuum. Uh, that little thing spins and turns and tries to figure it its way out of uh, different scenarios very quickly.
One other uh, compliment that I do want to give to a Bodhi while that's cleaning is the instruction manual. So a lot of time when you buy these Chinese products, uh, the English uh, instruction manual, not very good. Um, but I gotta say the instructions in this thing were very, very good. Uh, there wasn't a ton of grammar errors or spelling mistakes. Uh, I, I definitely am not the type of person that should be, um, you know, criticizing people's grammar or spelling errors, but uh, the book, book is quite good. There's a lot of uh, descriptions for different types of errors that you might run into and very good uh, pictures as well. So I definitely got to give them compliments for that. It's way, it was way better than the Dream Tech manual. In terms of noise, uh, I'd say it's probably on par with the Dream Tech. It's not annoying at all. And you can see here, it didn't really pick up any of those little spots there. But uh, as you can see, it's kind of, <laughs> looks like it's definitely kind of wandering around. So I have it scheduled to go off at one in the morning. My shark robot over there, uh, it's gonna go off at, uh, I think 11 a.m. or excuse me, 11 p.m. So the robot mop will have plenty of time for the vacuum to kind of do its thing. Um, and I won't have to, you know, sit out here and babysit this robot because it's definitely choosing some really odd patterns to clean. It's not exactly random, but at times it certainly feels like it's random. One thing that the Dream Robot does is it usually does like the outer perimeter first. And then what it does, it'll start, you know, kind of breaking down the room like that. And then if you have it for multiple passes, it'll do like a hatch pattern and go back and forth like this. But it's usually really good about picking a, you know, a very efficient route. This one definitely seems like it's just kind of ping pongs a little bit. But hey, I'm not doing the work, right? The robot's doing the work. So if it's a little bit inefficient, I mean, it's up to the, the robot. At least it's, to me, as long as it gets clean, that's what really uh, matters to me. Oh, it actually went under there. Nice. <laughs> it's probably going to find lots of little bugs under there. Maybe it'll keep some of the bugs from uh, hanging out under there. There's a robot that's kind of constantly going in there. I do have this thing scheduled to run a couple times a week. Uh, mostly being that I'd imagine I'm going to run out of water really quick in the, uh, in the docking station, which also means that I have to put in uh, cleaning solution every time that it gets refilled so I think a couple of times a week should be good enough at least maybe for over there I'll set it up maybe to run three times a week yeah look at that weird pattern it does all right we'll continue to let this run and We'll get back with the final results. All right, everyone. So the uh, mopping is done. Um, I will say that the when I ended the video, uh, one thing that was quite strange is the robot actually only cleaned this area. It did a mapping around this. It did a little bit of this, but then for some reason it just gave up on cleaning all of this. Um, I went through the app and I did rezone everything. So this is going to be its own separate area. Uh, it's going to be separate from, from the weightlifting area over here. I sent it out again and it's gone through and it's made its passes. I will say that for its second attempt at doing the garage, it did a much better 
job of doing, you know, like nice little patterns. Um, I'll probably change this so that it does a third pass as well for the uh, parking area, the garage uh, for the car parking area. Um, let's take a look at the actual results. As you can see, this is probably going to use a little bit of elbow grease to get up these stains that are uh, quite deep within that coin pattern. So this is going to need a little TLC, if you will. Uh, so luckily for me, I got my, my handy little mop over there. Got my buckets, so that's no issue. Uh, I'm thinking once we do get this area cleaned up, it should look, um, you know, it should do a much better job of, of staying clean. As you can see over here, the little spots where the mop was able to go, it is, uh, it is a little bit cleaner. But again, it doesn't get the edges, so take that into account. And then over here, looks really nice, looks really good. This is the area that I'm, I'm definitely most uh, interested in keeping clean. So uh, all in all, you know, so far the um, app is looking good. Setting that up is looking good. The, the functionality is working so far. Um, obviously it would be nice to get the coin patterns a little bit cleaner, but that's okay. And uh, so far, so good. I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll definitely give this an eight out of 10. It's certainly not perfect, but um, you know, again, I'm not the one doing the work. So if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like the content, please subscribe. See you, thank you, take care, and I appreciate you watching my videos.